Hello folks, this is Johnny again and welcome to another little quote unquote secret of mine. This is not really a secret, this is such a basic trick. Uh, but it's very important for my personal mixes these days. Um, so today I will talk about how I process my drum bus, my complete drum bus. Um, let's just take off all the processing that's going on on there. So this is my main drum bus. And this is an FX channel with parallel compression going on on the whole drum bus. So I took that out right now. And also here those inserts I took out. And with that, the volume drops a little bit. So let's put that back up and listen to what that sounds like in the mix. Yeah, it sounds like it needs a little bit more work and spicing up. So let's put everything here back in and see what it sounds like now. Yeah, a bit more punchier and spicier and groovier. So let's see what's going on in here. Let's take off the parallel compression for now again and just check this chain. So without anything, again, the drum's just raw. Okay, 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 fine and dandy. And now, first of all, again, a compressor on my drum bus. I find this really helps to pull it all together, make it feel like a unit. So for this I like to use the 1176 emulation. And depending on the project, sometimes a different compressor, like the H comp or yeah. And in this one, I like to go with a typical drum processing trick that's very specific to the 1176 go really fast on the release and slow on the attack and then ratio yeah i leave it at four to one and then apply the input so it compresses about three db Now that I think about it, I just said this is a 11 to 76 specific process, but no. Um, use any compressor you have at hand and try fast release, slow attack, and uh, 3 dB gain reduction with a ratio between 2 to 1 and 4 to 1. Just experiment. It can really help to make things come together. And after that, I like to use the J clip. Here it is. Free plugin. I just recently started to use this, um, and now it really helps me to keep those peaks at the the final check in, and it helps keeping the snare at the same level as the kick because, especially on my mixes, the snares tend to pop out more than the kicks, and so I don't run into any problems later on with my mix bus processing and mastering. I like to put it to the same level. And the great thing about it is you don't really hear it doing much, but it does keep the peaks in check and really helps me out later on. This is pretty, pretty neat. Okay, and now let's uh, pull that down again. Take in the parallel compression. Mm -hmm. 
Uh huh. Another layer of groove and of punch, and it sounds more sparkly and fatter. So what's going on in there? Uh, let's check this out. Let's put it up a little bit because it's rather quiet on its own. Oh my goodness, that sounds bright. Um, here we go with the EQ. As you can see, boost the high end like crazy. That's a 12 dB boost at, uh, I don't know, 9K, 10K, somewhere around that line. Uh, you don't have to be too precise. And then low end about around 70 Hertz, give or take, and boost it again. And doing this before the compressor really helps to add more sparkle and richness and fatness without things getting harsh and boomy and muddy. I really like this trick. Uh, so let's take that one in, or well, first without anything. Yeah, that's planned. Now take it in. Yeah, that's sounding quite unnatural. And now the compressor again, I like to use the 1176 emulation. And this time around, I don't go as fast as possible with the release, but just a little bit slower until it starts to feel like it's pumping. I think using that pumping effect can help to add this more groovy feel to the drums. And also the attack, I don't put too slow, a little bit faster so it catches the peaks a bit more, and then set the input until it starts to sound like it's really squashing it. Yeah, something around those lines. And then you just uh, fade it in with the original drum bus track until you notice it's doing something. And then you pull both back down again so you get your, your gain stage as before. And now that I think about it, I could also use the J clip on my parallel compression channel. So let's take the threshold all the way up again and just look at this thing. So yeah, the peaks were going quite crazy in there because the compression is also going quite crazy and it's still letting some of the transients through. It's not all too fast, the attack time on that compressor. So of course the peaks will go haywire afterwards. Um, but again, the J clip helps to keep it in check without it s sounding weird. Okay, and then let's get our ball in balance in there again. And that's it! And as you have probably deduced by now, um, as you can see on the kick and snare and toms themselves, I don't do a whole lot of crazy stuff. It's really just one compressor with basic settings and then the saturation up afterwards on the kick and snare. And on the snare, just a little bit of that... Uh, uh, fast compression technique I showed you last time to, to add that bit more sustain and snare sound and crackle. And then the rest of the punch comes from my drum bus processing. That's it. And I really prefer using that technique over heavily processing the individual drum tracks because it helps to keep things together, make them feel like a unit, and it also sounds more natural to me. So I hope this was interesting enough. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, uh, subscribe and give us a like on Facebook and check out our music on Bandcamp. You will find all the links in the description. And I will see you in the next video.